Hi guys and welcome back. So it all sounds good so far, we have a strong melody, we have all the drums we could ever wish for, but it's still not sounding very natural. So to help with this, you're going to start adding plug-in effects to these sounds to help them all sit together in the mix. So the first thing I want to do is add a delay effect to that melody, as it's a little bit boring at the moment, as it hasn't got any effects on it. Now, we can add plugins from various different places, but the easiest way to do it is just click the little E button on the channel. So I'm just going to get a little bit more space on the top section, click on the pluck channel, and then click on E for edit channel settings. So as you know from the last lesson, this shows us the frequencies in our element, but on the left hand side we can add effects known as inserts. So at the moment we're on the channel of pluck 01, as you can see at the top here. If I click on another channel, you can now see that the edit settings window is now applicable to the snare 01. Now if your window just disappeared, like this, then all you need to do is right click somewhere around here and make sure that always on top is ticked. Then your window won't disappear each time you click off it. There's also another way to change channels and that is with these up and down arrows here. And you can see them changing in the background. So you don't have to keep closing this window each time. You can just get to other channel settings via either one of those two methods. So we're on the pluck settings. Let's just play it, remind ourselves what we've got. And you can see again, there's some unwanted low frequencies in here. So we're just gonna get rid of those very, very quickly. As John's already shown you, we'll make this a steeper curve, 48 dBs per octave. And that's probably about right there. Okay, so let's add some interest to this song. It's a little bit dry and boring at the moment. So let's add some delay. We come over to the slots on the left-hand side called inserts, and we'll click the down arrow. We'll go to delay, and we'll choose the stereo delay, which comes with Cubase. So this is the stereo delay plugin. As you can see, it's pretty simple. Don't be put off by all these knobs and parameters. You have a left channel and you have a right channel, and you can vary the delays on the left and have them different on the right, or vice versa, it's up to you. At the moment, both channels are set to 1-1, one, one, which means one bar, so each repeat will be every bar, and this is a bit too long for what we want. So with our pluck soloed, let's just see what we've got so far with this one bar delay. So as you can hear, it's, it's far too long at the moment. So let's change these to quarter notes, but I'm gonna have them slightly different from the left to the right. That way we get different delays on the left to different delays on the right, and it just makes a nice effect. So let's have a quarter dotted note on the left and a standard quarter note delay on the right. Let's see what we've got now. Okay, quite a cool effect, I hope you agree. And we've got different delays on the left and right, which is giving it that nice stereo spread. But the delays are a little bit too intense at the moment. So let's dial these back a bit. So the mix knob here for the left channel, we'll bring that down to about 17 or so. We'll do the same for the right channel, roughly the same as the left hand side. And we'll just play that, see what effect that has. So those repeats are a bit more manageable now. And as the right channel is a slightly shorter delay, it just fades out a little bit quicker. So let's just increase the feedback a little bit, maybe around 60 or so, or 64 or so. And if you're wondering what the feedback control actually does, it just controls how long the delay will carry on for. The higher the feedback, the longer the delay will last. It's as simple as that. So let's just play that now with our fine adjustments. Sounding pretty good. 
let's just have a quick listen without the solo. So back in the mix. Nice one, we're getting there, sounding pretty good. So now we want to start adding a bit of depth to most elements, and we do that with a plugin known as Reverb. You've probably heard of it. Reverb is one of those effects that will pretty much go on every single element in the mix, or at least most things. But to put a reverb plugin on every single track would be a bit silly, and it also would put quite a strain on your computer. So what we do is we set up a global reverb, and then we can just send as much of each element to it as we like. Don't worry if that sounds complicated, it really isn't. And you'll see that it's a really, really great tool to use and you'll start using it in all your future productions. Now, as with everything in Cubase, there's a couple of different ways we can do this. Just close down that window. You can come up here to plus track and we wanna choose effect track this time. So we'll click on no effect, reverb, and then we'll just choose Roomworks, which is the basic reverb plugin in Cubase. Don't have to change anything else, we'll just name it though. We'll call this main reverb and we'll click add track. So here's the plugin itself and if we just look behind it, just turn off my lower zone, and you can see we now have an effect channel called main reverb. And as this is an effect channel, we'll just make this something completely different color wise, maybe orange, and I'll do the folder as well, orange. So let's go and check these settings for our reverb. So we'll click on Edit Channel Settings, and then the E again for the actual reverb plugin itself. So the most important thing here at the moment is to change the mix to 100%. Now we do this on a send effect because we only want to hear reverb coming out of this channel when it comes back. We don't want any of the original signal getting through. I'll show you what I mean in just a sec. So let's give this some basic settings. We'll increase the reverb time a little bit. Maybe something around three seconds. We'll reduce the diffusion a little bit. Diffusion just changes the shape of the room and therefore how the reflections behave. So this is not a huge reverb, it's a medium length reverb if you like, but it's just to give the sounds some depth. So at the moment, this reverb isn't doing anything because there's nothing being sent to it. So let's go to the pluck sound again. And on the left hand side, open our audio inserts. You'll notice that we didn't have to go to edit settings. Like here, you can also get to the inserts and the sends on the left hand side. Sends is just underneath. We'll be coming to that in a second. For the moment, I'm just going to turn off the stereo delay so we can concentrate on adding reverb. So now we need to send the signal to the reverb unit. So we go to audio sends and that will expand. Click on the down arrow in the first slot. And now we have some options. Here is our new effects channel that we named main reverb. So click on that. Now we need to switch it on with this button here. I'm just gonna turn down the send level to nothing just to show you an example of how we're going to turn this up and how it affects the sound and how it affects the reverb. So let's just solo our pluck, as that's what we're concentrating on as well. Cubase has automatically soloed the effect channel for us as well, so that's really helpful. So I'll just play this with no send on it at all. And I'm going to slowly increase the send and you'll hear more and more reverb being added to it. Really, really nice. So you can adjust this to taste. And adding this effect does not affect the original signal. We're just adding the reverb signal to it. And again, as I said, this allows us just to have one global reverb plugin, which is much, much better on the CPU. And we can go into all our different elements and add a differing amount of reverb or a differing amount of send to each one so that's pretty cool, huh? So again, just thinking about clearing up the low end of the track, the low end of your track is really, really important. And it's quite an easy way to go wrong with your mix. Let's go to the reverb channel and also take out a little bit of the low end here as well. 
So the actual reverberations are not too muddy. So you should be getting pretty good at this by now. We'll be taking out the low end, roughly starting at 200 hertz. So we've added reverb to the pluck sound. Let's add some more. Now I don't really want to go into every single channel and start adding the send. There's an easier way to do that. So what I'm going to do is just highlight the first channel, which is the kick in this case, and highlight the last channel. We've done the pluck, so I don't need to highlight that. I'm going to hold down the shift button and left click, and it will highlight all of those channels in between. And with them highlighted, I'm just going to open up my lower zone and make sure I'm on the mix console tab. Now I know this is our first look at the mixer and don't worry, we'll be spending a bit of time in this later on in the course. But for now, I just want you to click these three dots here, which gives you a few more options. And we're gonna press the quick link button. This will temporarily link any tracks that you've selected. In our case, we've got five tracks selected, so they're all linked now. So if I wanted to, I could change the volume of one and it will change them all just for example. So what we'll do is we'll go to edit settings on one of these channels and the sends are on the right hand side of the edit channel settings window. So we'll just choose our main reverb again. Now this will have added a send to all of those highlighted channels. So it's a nice little shortcut. So I'm just gonna switch the send on or activate it rather but we'll turn the send levels down at the moment and we can add the individual levels later on. So let's just quickly check that there, those sends have been added. For example, there's the kick and then we'll go to the next channel. You'll see the send is there, although not turned up as I said, etc., etc. So that was a quick way to add many things all at the same time. So we'll just quickly go into the kick channel and you don't normally want a lot of reverb on the kick, but a tiny amount can work well. So let's just quickly solo this so we can really hone in on this kick and make sure we haven't got too much reverb on this. So you can solo here from the edit channel settings window as well. It doesn't have to be done over here. So we want it about there, so it's just about audible. It just gives a little bit of space around that kick but without muddying it up too much. So I'll just quickly go to the other channels and add a little bit of reverb. So I've been through very, very quickly, as you just saw, just adding a bit of reverb to each element. Obviously we can change all those settings later on if we need to, when we're actually mixing the track, but that's a good start. So let's have a quick listen. So that's the end of the free lessons guys. We really, really hoped you enjoyed them and got a lot out of them. But if you want to continue to make this track, where you'll be adding more and more and more elements to make it a full track. And then we mix it professionally from start to finish. We leave nothing out, all step by step. We master it as well, and we end up with a fully professional track. If you wanna continue with us on this course, then click the link below and we'll see you there. All the best, bye bye.